Let's now shift our focus to education matters where the first term of the inaugural junior secondary school came to an end last week amid an array of teething problems like poor or in some instances lack of proper infrastructure and lack of necessary equipment. This despite the Ministry of Education's assurance that this year's recruitment of 36,000 teachers would address a teacher's shortage. Some junior secondary teachers who spoke to KTN news on condition of anonymity claims that they have been they have not been paid for the three months they have worked as Alan Ochanda reports there is a great discrepancy between the public and private schools last week saw schools closed for the April holidays but one lot may just have had a road deal. The junior secondary inaugural cohort has had a myriad of challenges, even though the government has held that this year's absorption of 36,000 teachers addressed the perennial problem. I'm aware that the Teacher Service Commission has already posted the new teachers to our junior secondary schools. They have also been upgrading some of our teachers in our primary schools to be able to effectively teach our junior secondary schools. And I would want to assure the country that learning is taking place in our junior secondary schools. Although the junior secondary level of grade 7 and 8 were the most targeted in the teacher deployment, the instructors were instead sent to primary schools, junior secondary and high schools, thus little significance. The junior secondary learners are supposed to be taught 14 subjects, but the deployment of two teachers per school spells doom. In JSS, we have about 14 learning areas, and secondary school teachers are trained to teach at most two teaching subjects. Most of our schools, about 70% of junior secondary schools, had humanities teachers deployed. These humanity teachers are teachers teaching basically history and religion, teaching geography and Kiswahili. These are teachers who have not been in position to teach integrated science because integrated science is a combination of chemistry, physics and biology. This tells you that most of our junior secondary schools have gone for a full term without introducing learners to integrated science. To make CBC a success, the ministry had all teachers undertake retooling, basically to build capacity. This is a retooling program that was there through the government. It has enabled us teachers, one, to understand the CBC itself, and also the mode of teaching is really different. This one, it is a part of you do, a learners they do, and also you do all of us. But to some teachers, they still have uh, the, the, the rigid mind that uh, they just want to lecture, kind of it. The retooling was okay. We were requested to take six teachers, the retooling, and the head teacher, which we had uh, three days for head teachers. And uh, we urged the government to persist on retooling our teachers, and we expect another retooling to be done so that our teachers can be versant with the CBC. Comparatively, public schools are limping in terms of infrastructure, while private ones are ahead. At Kakamega Hill School in Kakamega, laboratories are fully equipped. At Pendo School in the same county, the head teacher is checking on the lab equipment after learners left for holidays. The Ministry of Education has announced it disbursed capitation to the schools, but speaking to KTN News on condition of anonymity, some teachers claim they haven't been paid anything since their posting three months ago. If you take stock across the country, 70 to 80 percent of teachers who are employed in junior secondary schools and all interns have not been paid for three months. Where do you expect them to get fair to school? How do you expect them to feed themselves? Because junior secondary schools have no lunch program for teachers. How do you expect them to live to the common decency associated with the teaching profession? Alan Ochanda, KTN News. All right, it's now time for what's uh, trending. And I